is my final video for Geeks Challenge. It's called Inspiration is Everywhere. And since this challenge is Anything Goes, here goes everything. I am going to show you how to draw a line sheet for a fashion presentation. The first thing we need to do is put down a background. And if you'd like to learn this technique, you can watch Res Dog's video. It's called Asphalt and AstroTurf in the Anything Goes videos. The next thing we need is some swatches. So I'm going to turn on my swatches here, and you'll see there's my pattern swatch and my color chips. We'll need some text. This collection is called Geekwear for Spring Summer 2013. I'll open Illustrator, and now let me show you how to take one of these patterns we generated in the last video called A Pattern Emerges and bring it into Photoshop, keeping the seamless repeat. Find your pattern in your swatches and drag it out. Right click and ungroup and you're going to grab just the swatch and now fill it again with the pattern. If I alt drag you can see it lines up perfectly. So we're just going to copy one of these, control C, go back to Photoshop and we're going to open a new file in Photoshop, file new. It's going to open to the size that's already in our clipboard which is the size of the swatch so just click OK and paste. We're going to paste it as a smart object and now edit to find pattern. And there it is, a seamless repeat pattern from Illustrator into Photoshop. I did my forecasting research this season, and this is not the color palette that we want to use. We actually have different fabrics. I'm going to go to my swatch, and since I set this up using smart objects, you can watch It's a Plaid Plaid World to see how to do this. I'm going to double click on my smart object, click OK. When it takes me to here, I'm going to double click, and I'm going to change out the fabric Close the file, click yes, and there's the correct fabric. We also have to change the color chips to match the fabric. So I'm going to click on my color chip layer, grab the paint bucket tool, and now if I hold down the alt key, I can grab a color and fill, grab another color, fill, last color, and fill. So now I've got my proper color swatches in. Now we have to change out the fabric on these particular garments. And again, I set up my file using smart objects, so it's going to be a very simple thing to do. I'm going to double click on the smart object, click OK, double click on the fabric, swap it out to a different pattern, which is the one I want right here. 15, I'm going to change it to 25% scale, click OK, close this file, save changes, yes, and it's going to apply the fabric and keep all the shading and warping I've already done because I set it up as a smart object. We'll do the other side, double click on the fabric, choose the fabric I want, change the scale to 25, click OK, close, yes, and we can do the next one. And we're just going to do this for every piece of fabric until I have them all changed out to the proper fabric. And all my fabric is now swapped. The next thing I need to do is change the fills because they are no longer the correct fabric fills. I'm going to fill with a very dark red. So I will grab my eyedropper, pick the red, and Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill. We'll close that one up and we'll move to the next one. This one I'm going to fill with a different color and we'll grab the yellow. And again, Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill this one. We can close that layer, open the last one, go to My Fill and select a color. And again, Alt Backspace or Option Delete. This particular waistband has a drawstring and that's not what I want. What I actually want here is ribbing. So I'm going to spin open one of these layers. I'm going to go to my Smart Object right here, which is that information double click on it and it's going to take me back to Illustrator. And I'm going to make a few changes because that is the fun of using a smart object. So I want to change this drawstring waistband to ribbing. I'm going to start by removing what I don't want, which is this drawstring here. So now I'm going to use my appearance panel to create some ribbing. I already created a graphic style and it's going to look like this, but let me show you what I did. And this was inspired by Vector Geek's Railroad Tracks tutorial. I started with a 20-point black stroke. On top of it, added a 17-point white stroke. On top of that, a 17-point black stroke. 
but this time dashed 0 0.5, 2 point, 0 0.5, 2 point. On top of that, I added another dash stroke, but this time 2.5, 2.5, and I lowered the opacity on this one to 50%, so it gives me kind of a gray look. And that is how I created my ribbing. So now I'm gonna take this with my direct selection tool, copy this curve. So copy, paste in front, and I'm gonna move it down my arrow key, get rid of the fill, and now I can apply the graphic style that I just created, right click, arrange, send to back. Then I'm going to hold my shift key and select this top waistband piece, right click and make clipping mask. So now I have my ribbing placed inside my clipping mask. I've restored the stroke and I can delete this little piece here. I'm gonna close this file, save it, yes. Now you can see I have ribbing on all my garments, but there is one little problem. I still have the drawstrings I colored in, so we need to fix that. So I'm gonna go back to the layer where I masked off my pattern, click on my layer mask, grab a paintbrush with some white, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint out those little drawstrings so that the fabric color shows through. That's all taken care of, but we still have a little more work to do here. We have to update the graphics because these are last season's graphics. So let's start with the brain graphic. The brain graphic was done by Nicole Oliver in her smart text video. Double click on the smart object. It's gonna take me here. Double click on the smart object going to take me back into Illustrator and we're going to make a few changes. I'm going to change the text and this was a great tutorial because it showed how to keep the text active. Instead of let's have a brainstorm, we're going to change it to let's make some noise. Before I close this out and go back to Photoshop though, I need to change my colors. We're going to go up here to the recolor artwork icon and plug in this color group. Click OK. And then we'll close the Illustrator file, save the changes, and when we go back into Photoshop, we should see our changes applied to the document in Photoshop. And there it is. We'll go ahead and close this document, save the changes, and there we go. Let's make some noise in the proper colors, but there's still something missing. We need some noise. So we're gonna go Filter, Noise, Add Noise, and Monochromatic, Gaussian, and click OK. So now that shirt's complete, let's move on to the next shirt. And again, back into Illustrator. This superhero design comes from Dan Rodney from his superhero text effect tutorial. So the first thing I'm gonna do is edit the text and uh, double click on it. And I'm gonna change this to gradient. And I also need to change the colors. We'll close this file, save changes, yes. And when we go back into Photoshop, we should see them applied. We can go ahead and close this, select yes. And now we've got that on our shirt. This tribal design was inspired by two video tutorials, Deanne Topping's monogram snowflake video and ResDog Chris's tribal art vectors video. Let me open this one up and double click on the smart object, turn off my color overlay, double click on the smart object to take me back into Illustrator. So I added my own little twist to it. And the reason I did this with a symbol is because it's very easy to change out the symbol and then change my snowflake. So I will select my snowflake. I will go up to replace symbol, drop down and select the other symbol that I've got set up and ready to go. And now I've got a new snowflake. I can save changes to my deep lake, go back into Photoshop, and we're gonna go ahead and save this file. Save, yes. And there's my deep slate now on the shirt. And we're almost done with the line sheet now. So I need to turn off my turquoise color overlay for geek wear. And now that I look at it, the red textiles against the green astroturf, it's feeling a little Christmassy to me. So I think what I need to do is turn off the green layer and get rid of the AstroTurf, and we'll go back to asphalt. And I think we'll even lower the opacity just a little bit to lighten it up. Now that I look at this, Geekwear just doesn't seem like an appropriate title for this amazing collection of garments. Instead of Geekwear, I propose that we call this collection Deekwear. Thank you for sharing your terrific tutorials. I got a lot of great ideas, and I hope you did too. See you next year.